Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in the NOAA Central Library. We're very excited to have Cheryl Oliver here, who is um, with the NOAA Office of Communications and the director of the NOAA Heritage Program. Um, this program includes an annual NOAA Heritage Week, a celebration, a NOAA Open House in the Silver Spring Campus, an internal mini grant program, and a traveling Treasures of NOAA's art exhibit, uh, currently in Boulder at the Earth System Research Laboratory, um, which is its 14th venue in as many years. And Cheryl is a fourth generation Washingtonian in DC, a second generation NOAA employee, and married to a now retired NOAA colleague as well. So please welcome NOAA, Cheryl. All right, so I, I've gotten to check, talk with a couple of you guys, so you have to be kind. Oh, lights went off. Um, no, I'm good. Um, because you're not recording this. I mean, you're not visually recording this, and that's a good thing. Um, Thank you. This is a great opportunity because for some of you who may or may not know, the NOAA Heritage Program, and I'll go into this a little bit when we get into the part I really know, <laughs> um, was called the Preserve America Initiative. And out of that initiative, that was um, under uh, the Bush second Bush administration about promoting federal properties and the heritage assets to the public because they belong to the public. And that's how we kind of started the whole idea of really telling the NOAA story beyond the many folks that are way before me, like Skip Tageberge and, and uh, other folks who can tell the story a whole lot better than I can. But uh, we're really proud of the program. It has been, it was housed in the National Marine Sanctuaries program for many years because of the maritime heritage um, component and connection, but supported NOAA-wide. And we just had it elevated to the NOAA headquarters level um, just over two years ago. So when I, I kind of laugh, um, yes, I'm the director of two, myself and somebody else. So we have increased our <laughs> staff by 100%. Yay. And um, it's really at the best time um, right now because in 2020, NOAA does celebrate its 50th anniversary. And we are in the process of that campaign. And we'll roll that out the second week in January at AMS, uh, which celebrates their 100th anniversary and, and Weather Service is celebrating 150 years in 2020 as well. So we embrace all the anniversaries that are taking place because that's what makes NOAA NOAA. Um, so I am not a historian. I don't play one on TV and I don't play one in NOAA as well. Um, it is one of the things that we are lacking here at NOAA, and I can say that without any reservation or worried about administration or leadership worried about that, because it is something that they are working with me on. Um, I have to tell you that within our, our program of two, it is something that we are trying to push forward, especially for um, in 2020, to help bring a lot of the agency um, history together, doesn't have to be all in one place. We have so many line offices and program offices and programs and labs that have great history um, websites. It's just so that there's one place that people come to. So um, for those, I think I'm talking to uh, the choir here. You know, this is gonna be the quick looking back, just hitting some highlights of the fact that in 1807, Thomas Jefferson created Survey of the Coast. I will tell you that um, it's because of the rich history of NOAA and people who have uh, brought it to my attention and my 35 year career is why I have a passion looking at the history of NOAA and, and where we are now. Um, Ferdinand Hassler served as the first superintendent of the uh, Coast Survey and we have portraits of him and his work here on the Silver Spring campus. 1870, Grant establishes the weather National Weather Warning Service under Secretary of War uh, within the Army Signal Corps, and uh, first daily maps were published in 1872. And then 1871, he also authorizes U.S. Commission of Fish and Fisheries, and the nation's first lab is established in Woods Hole. Um, I was just at Woods Hole at their annual Woods Hole Science Stroll they have every year, and um, they are really looking forward to 2021 when we celebrate uh, the lab's uh, 150th as well. And then the Albatross was the first government um, research vessel for fisheries and, 
and ocean oceanographic research. And I know my colleagues could correct me, but I think we've had four albatrosses since then. 1890 Cooperative Weather Service Observers Network. That's now more than 12,000 uh, strong and continues. Uh, my cousins do it, and that's their connection to me, to NOAA as well. And then one of the things I'm highlighting in these slides mostly is how it all got moved around so much and how we finally came to NOAA. So in 1891, weather's transferred to the Department of Agriculture, and now it's U.S. Weather Bureau, a civilian weather service begins. We start still bouncing people around. We have fish and fisheries is transferred from Bureau of Fisheries, uh, I mean, to the Bureau of Fisheries of Commerce and Labor Departments. And one of my favorites, uh, 1917, uh, the Commission Corps, which is now our NOAA Corps, is established. Um, those are the field core that were uh, Coast and Geodetic Survey, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys know, and you can see it on um, our old website of history, um, NOAA.gov, is uh, that in World War II, one and World War II, these officers served in many, many um, uh, roles such as artillery surveyors, nautical chart makers, and uh, meteorologists. Uh, they just celebrated their Centennial in 2017, we were very proud to host 350 officers and families at their, um, their centennial this past, in 2017. Um, and of course, I'm assuming that all know that uh, today the NOAA Corps commands our, our fleet of ships and air, aircrafts and have been, especially our aircrafts have been very busy in the last uh, 20 days or so. Um, 1939, fisheries gets transferred yet again to the Department of Interior and Fish and Wildlife Service, the, the forerunner to the NOAA Bureau of Commercial Fisheries. And 1940, weather is transferred to commerce. I'd like to bring up um, the world's first weather satellite, Tyros One. It was on my birthday, <laughs> or at least the year of my birthday it was launched. It's also my connection to NOAA is that my father worked for ESSA. Uh, he also worked, I found out, for NESDIS. I thought he worked for the Weather Service. But that's mm -hmm. another story. And um, he worked in Suitland, and Tyros was uh, his baby. Um, 1960s saw the establishment of our Severe Storms Lab, Great Lakes Center, the Sea Grant Colleges and Pro Programs Act, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceanographic Labs, the Hurricane Research Labs, and others are established. I mean, it's just a boom that goes on. And then 1965, yes, I was five, um, ESSA was created. I'd like to say, what I find that interesting, the Environmental Services, Science Service Administration. Little personal story. I started elementary school, uh, kindergarten, and you had to in your little card that said what your parents did. My mother was a housewife. My father worked for ESSA and it was spelled out. And then five years later, I was taking the same card and had to spell out NOAA. So it goes way back in, in my family. So 1970, we have NOAA, you know, and um, if anybody's been following some of our news, um, it's good that NOAA is known now. I mean, there, we used to, always said, you know, people know NASA, but they don't know NOAA. I've always considered a very eclectic, great agency with a, a mi mission that is amazing and staff and workforce that is amazing as well. I don't think I would have stayed as long as I have if I didn't care about it. Um, so NOAA comes together. Um, if anybody followed it, I would, I'm going to put it out there. Rachel Maddow had a really good introduction um, uh, piece two nights ago about the history of NOAA. And if you get a chance, she does it so much better than I do. But the story that goes, and I do this down at Gateway at our exhibit that I'm sure all of you've been to, because if you haven't, I will track you down. Um, the story goes is why is NOAA in commerce? And why not interior? And I always tell the abbreviated story is that at the time, the president, Richard Nixon, was not happy with his interior secretary, and so he it under commerce and we are still there um, does it make sense 
yes. I mean, we we make it make sense by the fact that we're protecting life and property. As I see heads go, well, well, maybe not. But also the transport of, of, of commerce and also um, our fisheries management. So there have been, for the many years I've been here and many years I'm sure the folks that have been here as well, uh, different I, thoughts and processes that would be separated out as our own agency like EPA. There have been uh, thoughts that we've been, we would be moved over into the interior. But again, um, it takes several acts of, of Congress and others to be able to do that. But we make this work and I think we've been successful. So um, not to think that things didn't happen after 1970. There are many things that have happened since 1970 and I can't you know, go into all of those. Um, I think one of the biggest things, of course, is in 1972, we had major uh, legis uh, environmental legislation that passed and still run, you know, are the backbone to a number of things, especially on the wet side, you know, um, such as the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the National Marine Sanctuary Act, where I was for years, and coastal zone management. So we're also looking at, you know, more celebrations in the, about this, what this agency is about. So I'm gonna go ahead and look forward. See, that was it. <laughs> I wanna tell you a little bit about the, uh, the NOAA uh, Heritage Program. Um, we are going through a uh, strategic plan because we wanna be mighty. We might be two, but we wanna be mighty and we wanna be worthwhile and we wanna be valued to the agency and to the people that we're with. Um, so we look at it as a program that preserves and advances NOAA's rich history and heritage through events, programs, and exhibits. We're talking about identity. We've been spending a lot of time about identity, about not only agency, but also the identity of you and me, and no employees who care about what we do and advancing that identity. So we're hoping that through the projects we do that you can be involved in and also the 50th anniversary that we can enhance that identity of NOAA and the work we do um, in positive ways. <laughs> Um, again, I think I, I, I alluded to this. This program was um, established really in 2005. Uh, it's been, uh, a, it was only a portion of my job in National Marine Sanctuaries. Uh, it has been a NOAA employee, uh, rich and volunteered <laughs> rich <laughs> um, program. Uh, we, we've created uh, a an annual NOAA Heritage Week here on the Silver Spring campus and an open house here now. Um, we support open houses at all the different field labs as they do theirs um, and try to provide resources, whether it's just um, advice or tablecloths, but activities, those kind of things and supporting folks. Um, we have we were successful in 2011 to establish the Gateway to NOAA exhibit, which is at the base of Building 2, the Weather Service Building. Please check it out um, as a permanent exhibit on this campus. Um, we don't really have permanent exhibits like this um, throughout uh, our, our facilities. We've been fortunate now to um, also help advise what they did in Hawaii um, at um, the Pacific Regional Facilities, but they, they have an exhibit space. Um, we have been able to provide some advice on exhibitry only because that's what I was doing in my other job in, in sanctuaries. I was doing exhibit management with our research, I mean our visitor centers for the National Marine Sanctuaries. Um, the traveling exhibit, and I'll have to show you a couple. That, that is a exhibit that has again been homegrown. It came out of the 200th anniversary of Survey of the Coast. It's now been made more professional and we as no employees and a team will go and ch check out venues and have it um, in different venues across the nation. And then the internal program, I mean a funding program, which I'll tell you about. Just showing you guys some images from our open houses. Um, our open, open house events have been uh, very popular. Um, I will tell you that the poster we use, we've been using for about um, eight years. We're going to let that little boy grow up and get a new picture of somebody else. <laughs> but we're very, we've had from 1,100 to 1,300 people yearly 
on that one day here on the Silver Spring campus. I'm sure all of you, I am not the only one who gets a phone call from someone that says, I want to bring my child to Noah. What can you show them? And I go, oh, cubes. Uh, <laughs> but it's nice to know that we can, one, put them to our annual NOAA open house. It usually takes place in February. We have moved it uh, to March now. We will be doing it in March on a regular basis. Um, we got hit the last two years with the furlough or threat of furloughs. So if we're not doing that. We're going to do it in March, um, trying to do it before the cherry blossoms <laughs> and before nationals start playing. So it's all about timing. Um, we have over 100 NOAA employees that volunteer. I cannot tell you how exciting it is to have employees that are willing to do this year after year after year and take their Saturday and be here and tell about their programs to staff Gateway to NOAA and be the Ask the Meteorologist or to don the uh, Sanctuary Sam uh, mascot or be uh, Skyward, uh, Owly. Owly, yes, Sky, uh, Sky, Owly, Owly Skyward Horn. So, I, my heart, it just makes me very happy and I get very teary when I welcome them all. Um, it's also the best opportunity, especially when we were doing it in February, but March also works now, when the new sea, uh, Canal Sea Grant follows, fellows come. It's their first introduction, really, to this craziness and also finding out all about different parts of NOAA and interacting with folks they might be working with full time. We, about four years ago, five years ago, we reached out to the um, the uh, district, Maryland and Virginia area high school uh, students and now we have a coordinator um, on site here that will coordinate uh, kids to get their uh, community service and we rotate them and we also do an orientation and for the last four years they've been welcomed by the no administrator before we even start which is a really a great opportunity we are we have worked closely with Folger Pratt and facilities and security to be able to do tours of the National Weather Service Operations Center and those guys and gals are amazing. Um, they have even gotten to the point where it's just not like, here you are, this is what we do. I mean, they, they have an activity where um, the, the participants get to be report out as if they were doing a briefing. And then the same thing with Science on a Sphere. We're so fortunate to have it on campus now and have uh, do small tours there. Um, we, have a pot, we have a speaker series in the um, auditorium going on at the same time. Um, we have very popular, it's always the Hurricane Hunter, and what has gotten extremely popular now is uh, Sanctuaries has created a uh, virtual um, reality opportunity with goggles and with your phone um, to dive your sanctuary. Um, so we mix it up, find out what's going on, what's the most recent to topic. A very interesting topic was when we did a uh, lionfish, and we even dissected one there in the auditorium. Um, and like I said, meet the meteorologist, the scavenger hunt at Gateway, and then uh, a huge social media um, presence done by all. Uh, it just gets out there into, you know, different blogs, and people come. And the beauty is we do it on a Saturday. We do it on a Saturday so that people can park in these facilities because you know here, once they're full, they're full, and the Saturday makes it really great. Traveling Treasures of Noah's Ark exhibit. Um, we took this on because it came out of the 200th um, of Survey of the Coast. It was a little small traveling exhibit, and um, we got to improve it. We got to start shoving it around and doing it, and it is all, like I said, it's run by no employees. We we search the venue, we vi visit the venue, we talk, we get it shipped there. We are now talking to uh, visiting uh, vin uh, host venues about paying for shipping, but other than that, it's free to them. Um, it has a a crate like um, vision, you know, do not kind of the whole treasures of Noah's Ark or treasures of the lost ark. Got it. Raiders of the Lost Ark, okay. People are getting younger. Um, we try to put it in venues where people, where we have no employees uh, so they can have ownership. 
uh, for example, we had it in the Florida Keys at the Florida History and Discovery Center. So we have like 11 display crates that tell about the different line offices, but we do it about our mission, not per line office. And we'll have one crate that's, that is designated for that area, for what what is NOAA in their community, so that when a visitor comes into that museum, they can see themselves in NOAA. So that's really great. We're doing the same thing even in the Boulder Lab. And while we have it in the Boulder Lab, it was great when we were putting it up. It has The lab has a very large um, atrium. And we had folks coming by, no employees, and they said, this is great. This it looks beautiful. It's been empty. It's wonderful. And they have one crate that's empty for them to do a display. And so I had one uh, gentleman come up to me and say, well, I don't see myself in this exhibit. There's a lot of wet stuff. You know, where's the dry side and blah, blah. I said, okay, where do you work? He said, uh, space weather. And I said, great. You help me tell your story and I'll do it. That's why I want this. I want to know, how do I tell your story? Now, you can't bring me reams of paper, and you can't bring me a satellite, but how can I tell your story through graphics or through different objects? Because it's all about three, a lot of people love to see those 3D objects. I can tell you the next venue, if you want to see treasures, will be in March 2020. We'll be at the Navy Yard at the Navy Museum there. So we will be getting information out about that. All you have to have is your CAC card and you can go in. So we're really excited about the fact that they're gonna take it on for a year for us. Um, the program, <laughs> program, it was me. Um, <laughs> we try to help tell the other story. I was doing a detail with the NOAA Corps for their NOAA Corps Centennial, working with David Hall, their, their communications director, and we helped design and deploy a uh, centennial uh, exhibit based off of the whole treasures feel and look um, with a timeline. But we looked at the uh, interactions between the NOAA Corps and the Coast Guard. And so we had it up at their, the Coast Guard um, Academy Museum uh, in 2017, which was great. For those who don't know, our NOAA Corps officers, their basic operate, um, Officer training classes. They they co-train with the note with the Coast Guard. So it was really great to be up there. Um, in the first image, you'll see up close that is a model of the Delaware, one of our uh, research, fisheries research vessels. Uh, we've had to move it out of there because it was a temporary space. Um, we still have a small window display case there at the Coast Guard um, Museum, and also we have our ship still there. And the image on the right hand side is now and we moved it and installed it and tweaked it down there at the Florida Air Museum in Lakeland because that is where our, our aircrafts are now in Lakeland, Florida, um, have moved from um, Tampa to Lakeland. And it's been a great support opportunity there. So go down and see it. Um, one of the things and when we were pulling together the whole NOAA Heritage Program was how do we involve employees? Because this is about you. It's not about, it's not about headquarters. It's not about the labs. I mean, it's about what you're doing and how you are part of the NOAA community. So we have an internal project funding program. I like to call it mini grant. Um, grants office doesn't want me to call that because we don't process any of these through the grant program. But it is a way between projects between 2 and 12K to, to tell our story in the field. Most of them are in the field, um, but we have had a number of projects. Um, actually, D received funding to do the restoration of the Pathfinder um, oil painting. And that is still on display, not here, but downtown, but we're going to be rotating that. Um, I encourage you to apply if you have a neat idea. And it's about heritage, but also about what is that big bang for the buck that we get the, the how do we get the community to know more about NOAA and what NOAA means to them in their community? We've had oral histories done. We've done classroom activities. We've done trails. Um, 
trail signage. And we will be having all of these on our website real soon that you can see updates on it. We, it is a um, competitive, but not NSF competitive uh, process. We'll announce the funding in October. We have $100,000 and we usually fund uh, eight to 10 projects a year. And uh, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun to see how people have taken it on. Weather Service has really stepped up their game. Um, there's a, this year we're funding a kiosk that's um, a standing kiosk that's being redone in, I want to say, Tennessee um, with images. And we're hoping also to put in uh, artifacts or at least maybe 3D uh, designed artifacts that would have been in that kiosk that would have taken measurements. And we will have links to all these. But most of the, our old our old websites having getting transferred over to a new website. So, but we're going to have links to all these things. Gateway to NOAA. For those on the phone, if you're not uh, in Silver Spring campus, when you come, call me. I'll give you a tour. But for those who are sitting right here, if you have not been to Gateway, I want to see you after this meeting. <laughs> I will escort you down. Um, again. That space is about 600, 800 square feet. It's in the base of uh, Building 2 um, at 1325 East West Highway or SSMC2. We have to cover all the bases for people to understand where it is. It's open and free to the public Monday, Monday through Friday, uh, 9 to 5. If you all have something going in your offices that you need a reception place, see me. We can do that after hours that sort of thing. If you have regional people in town, you should take them through there because it gives them a broader idea of what NOAA is about. I tend to find out, I do the employee orientation for the um, for workforce management every two weeks and I love when the new employees come through because I like to say, okay, let me tell you about NOAA. And we have a timeline in there, we have a heritage wall, we have a uh, graphics and all about the different missions. We are very one NOAA talk. We have um, we have the uh, Ocean Today kiosk in there. And the idea is to give them a broader idea of what NOAA is about. I bring my mother there. <laughs> After 35 years, she's still trying to figure out what I do because dad worked for Weather Service. And he didn't, he worked for Sellers. But, but the thing is, it is a great opportunity to get an overall perspective of what NOAA is about. Um, so I encourage you to visit it. I encourage you also to let me know what you can think we can do to make changes. We have an art display in there as well that we change things on the, on the walls. Um, we have a ticker that does uh, NOAA news. I will tell you, no, we do not announce marriages or ball scores or retirements. Not happening. Um, and it hasn't gotten hacked. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, the space right now is is um, kind of you have to self-led. You have to to lead yourself. Um, the goal of our program is to eventually create a marketing plan, but we don't can't do a marketing plan until we know how we're going to staff it. And we are planning to create a docent plan. Um, as we said, I'm married to someone who retired from NOAA. He could be a docent. <laughs> He's not happy about that, but he could be a docent. Um, I know some of you plan to retire. You could be a docent. And um, it would be great because right now it, it's catch can as we can because if I get a phone call and someone says, oh, I have a grandson who's interested in meteorology or whatever, I'm tapping my weather service guys and gals and saying, hey, can you give me five minutes or give me about 10 minutes and do, you know, at least talk to these folks. Or again, um, hurricane hunters or nap or the uh, navigators are really popular. Um, so we do a lot of that and we do a lot of coordination between Science on a Sphere and uh, Gateway whenever we can. So where are we going? We have a we have a 50th anniversary next year, and we have um, my program has taken the lead, working with uh, all of the communications directors across uh, the NOAA offices, also working with the library, 
working with um, different uh, corporate offices, including chief staffs, and also um, have pulled a steering committee together that has brought in folks from the field. And we're going to be launching the 50th campaign in January. So we're working fast and furious. Um, the first thing was to get our goals and our themes together. Um, the theme will be NOAA at 50, connecting science to life. We don't have that moonshot. We have an earth shot, but we don't have a moonshot. And we think that connecting science to life really brings it all together. It brings it together whether you're here at headquarters, if you're at a lab, or if you're at a uh, weather forecast office. One of the other taglines we plan to use, or at least social media, is science close to home. Because it feels good and it makes us connect to what we're doing. Um, our goals to increase the brand with no brand with the public. Well, we're getting that right now. <laughs> Bounce. Um, engage and energize the workforce. Um, we totally recognize that there are 11,400-ish full-time equipment employees. We also recognize half uh, that number more is our contractors, and then we have our NOAA Corps. We want to engage all of our workforce, so we're working really hard to how we are going to look at the 50th and look at what uh, the contributions have been. So. Um, guys have ideas, we'll take them, but we're really, really working on that. And I think we will make some headway. And then build appreciation from partners and stakeholders. Um, we're going to be going through a social media campaign. We're going to be reaching out to all of our partners, whether it's Aquaria or others, to, to do shout outs. Um, the activities you see here that are 50th branding, corporate communications, workforce recognition, just so you know, we're changing that to workforce appreciation. I think that means a lot. Oral histories, we have an oral history project taking place. Um, an internal photo contest. The NOAA.gov landing page for the 50th is going to be bright and short with great messages and videos. And while I love the 200th when we did uh, survey the coast, it's going to less is more. It's going to be readable. It's going to, we're going to love it. And we're going to also capture a lot of, we want to capture a lot of things that about the NOAA history and, and put it on those pages. And then eventually what will happen, that will become the NOAA Heritage um, page. Uh, 2020 events. We are not planning any new events for the 50th. We are going to leverage what we already have and working with our colleagues who are already we don't want to add people's work flows, but we will have graphics we will have messages um, the multimedia promotional products or media um, we have in the words of media we have a sizzle reel being developed that would be a new NOAA promotional um, two-minute video that we will be able to use and that's being uh, scripted out right now about the 50th and about who we are we are NOAA uh, congressional outreach, planning a NOAA Day on the Hill uh, in 2020, and then of course le leveraging ambassadors again. So the campaign is um, happy birthday NOAA, we've come a long way in 50 years. We appreciate our past, we are, we, we, um, are proud of the past, of being you know, the, our nation's oldest science agencies came together as one with a vision to protect and enrich uh, American life. So we're looking at past, present, today, because of the people who shaped our beginnings. We're a world-class science agency. And then the future, and that's what we really want to look at, is we're leading the next generation of scientists as they blaze forward. What does NOAA look like? If we do any additional events in 2020, we are thinking about if we can get it to work out as a plug-and-play kind of forum, TED-like talks that we would talk about what is that next thing? What is that gap that we have? Or what's that missing link that we have that we need to push NOAA you know, forward beyond the next 20, 30 years? So this is our campaign um, emblem, icon, not logo, <laughs> uh, that we've been working on. 
because um, <laughs> we only have one logo. But uh, we will be using this for uh, all newsletters and things like that. So we're excited about that. Uh, we are also looking at window clings and graphics. And then, because I didn't go into the history of NOAA, and I'm hoping that's not necessarily what everybody was looking for, but if you, if you want to learn more, we have a bunch of links that are available. Thank you to the library. But you did see I did a big pitch right there at the very top. Visit Gateway to NOAA if you have not, <laughs> the Gateway exhibit if you've not seen, seen it. Uh, if you're on the phone and you're in Boulder, bring a friend or whatever and see treasures. Treasures, like I said, everyone will find out where, when it is installed at the Navy Yard. Um, the two top links, celebrating200years.noaa.gov and history.noaa.gov, those are older links. You will find out that they have not been updated either since 2007 or 2012, depends when. And we will be capturing pieces of this to put onto the landing page for the 50th and repackage it in a way that um, is useful. But I have to say Fisheries Weather Service has just launched a uh, history page um, actually today with bits and pieces that they'll be working on um, as they go up to their 150th in February. Um, there are great there are great different ones from research and NOS and, and, and the rest of them. And we're hoping to, like I said, not combine them all, but have that one-stop shop. I, I can tell you also, uh, the one in fisheries in Woods Hole is for the Northeast Fisheries Science Center is excellent as well. So that's all I have. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll find out who could. Any questions in the room? Yeah. So for your planning for additional activities, uh -huh. you know, I would love some in -ramp. I have put out twice for in assignments and have gotten no interest. Want to talk? <laughs> um, yeah, we have actually, I mean, I think because sometimes what happens is the NRAP assignments, if they're not um, science or, or in the field or research, or I think a communications activity one has not gone as well or have generated that much interest as others have in the past. But um, I'm open to detail opportunities. And uh, it we just so that you know, even though uh, I said I work for uh, no Office of Communications and that was elevated uh, to downtown, I mean to headquarters. Diana Parker, who's my other half, um, she and I are located here on, on campus in building four on the seventh floor, four days a week. We only go downtown on Wednesdays because these are where my peeps are. I mean, I need to be, I need to be walking up and down the street and talking to people and then I have to see if a gateway is still functioning and or flooded or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, please come talk to me. Any questions in the field? Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, what do you recommend for homeschooling students who would like to learn more about NOAA? Is there a number to call for tours? Or Okay, so for homeschool, uh, there's two opportunities. I can arrange a tour here on campus, but we have to talk about specifics if you want to see Gateway. And then if you're looking for other um, educational curriculum opportunities, I would go to NOAA.gov and um, Office of Education. They have a lot of stuff, and so does the uh, National Marine Sanctuaries Program. And if someone is uh, going to Boulder, who do they talk to to get into the, the treasures? Okay, I'll have to get, I'll get her name, get the name back to you. It's Sarah, Sarah, smile. I'll, but we'll, I'll get the contact information because they do do tours on a specific days and make it easier to get in through um, security. Any questions in the room? Well, don't think we have any more online. Okay, if you get, and then, then if you don't want to ask me like in this form, come see me anytime. I'm way too friendly, and I will volunteer you. <laughs>
I will. I will. Right, Dee? Yes. Sharon, <laughs> yes. sure, thank you so much. I think this is great. And, you know, it, it's kind of an intro to a very rich, diverse, you know, picture of where maybe at least where to get started. There's so many faces of Noah and so many things to question and ask. So this was a great intro. Thank well, thank you. And, and, I, and I do encourage folks to get involved. Bring your family and friends to the open house. Uh, I think ours is March 14th, that that's a Saturday in 2020, but um, we will advertise it, don't worry. Um, we do need volunteers to, especially, this is a confusing campus when people park, they come out of the, out of the garage, they're lost. I love having, I can't have students out there to t say, well, this is where the Science Center is, this is where the Gateway is. Um, I need NOAA employees that are adults. Um, pointing the way up and down the, the uh, street. Um, I do provide donuts and coffee. The college park was a house. I yeah, I you and I do. This year, I thought it was just that fantastic. And they'll be having theirs again, I think, in May um, in 2020. We will have a list of, acti of different um, activities that are going on in 2020. And the thing is, is that they've always gone on. But we'll get that list so that you all will know what's going on. Um, and of course, the ever popular Noah Fish Fry will take place. Um, I run that. And tickets sell out very quickly, just so you know. Um, this past year, we do we sell the tickets online, and they sold out in 10 minutes. It was like a rock concert. Um, so uh, that one's going to be pretty special because it's the 45th anniversary of the Fish Fry and the 50th anniversary of Noah. Um, and it'll be my fifth one running. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl.